Okay, we're going to talk about French knives, but more specifically about the French brands, these kind of knives, which uh, use for different tasks, mainly, I guess, for food, I think, but some people use it for other things. Stay tuned. Here we go. So these are the brands I have, and uh, I can actually make just a quick video and be like, buy this, don't buy this, buy this. And that could be the end of the video, but you probably want to know why. And uh, so let's go at it. So Opinel, quite famous. I don't think I have to describe so much about the history because I think most people, you can check out other videos about that. So these kind of knives are very cheap, um, more of a tool knife. A lot of people use it for food, but you can use it for yard work and some bushcrafting, other things. It has a lock that you slide just like that, which is very nice. So it's safe like that. Bad thing is that you have to use two hands. So it's a little bit stiff right now, and that's also a bad thing is that there's you'll get a bit of wood swelling because I just washed it and used this. So very good knife. I never had any problem with it, even washing it. Um, no problem with the wood or um, uh, getting like moldy or rusty or anything like that. This is a number 10 Opinel. Highly recommend because 15 bucks 15 bucks and uh, it'll get the job done. So let's go on to this brand, Lagiol, or as you pronounce, should be more of like uh, you omit the G, Lagiol, if you're gonna be more French like, and Unenbrock. And this is uh, this is one of the Lagiol, it's, which is not trademark. If you're watching this, you probably know about uh, Lagiol, it's not a trademark uh, uh, word, so. You find a lot of brands you, and some knockoff. They're not really knockoffs, but <laughs> there's a lot of cheap ones, Chinese and Pakistan and other, and including there's a very there's a lot of a um, a lot of other French ones. But uh, this this particular brand actually is um, quite uh, a premium brand. It's probably there may be more premium ones, but this I but I there's not many. So this will be considered a premium brand. So. Um, I think I paid around 150 ish for this. So here we have a horn handle and you get the cross, which is, has a famous story. Uh, so this kind of knife, um, the reason I don't recommend it is because look, it looks quite beautiful, but, uh, guess what? Uh, because I am OCD, as I said before, and I, some other people are OCD as well. This is a type of knife that you don't want to get, um, just because uh, when you're buying stuff, you you always have expectations of of your money and that money going to va the value of, of what you're buying. And then so uh, in, in terms of this, you I guess you have to think about it as like one cutlery artisan is making the knife from first the from the uh, from the front to the end, 160 processes or something like that. And you have to find value in that. Otherwise, um, I had to fix the knife and I spent several hours, you know, so one part over here I, that I fixed is I used a diamond uh, plate to file this down and then I polished it with a Dremel, right? Another part is over here. Just use the diamond file on here and you, you can still see kind of cracking it. So basically what uh, this looked like, it had two kind of rough edges on rough edges on here and it looked like um, someone just nicked it like with the belt or something like that is very bad and I just like throw in some pictures into this video and then you can see and over here it looked like uh, somebody just used a like uh, some kind of pliers to actually cut it it's like a very rough edge I mean there's a lot of rough edges and over here uh, let's see right there so I filled that up with some resin or epoxy because there was actually a part over there. And it, what annoyed me was, it was not so much about the kind of crack, but that I can feel it catch my finger. So it felt rough. I hated that. So yeah, I got the, you get the knife and it's just, um, there's problems with it. Like, uh, it, of course it doesn't affect the function, but there's a problem with the fit and finish. And it's like, and when you spend a certain amount of money, you just have a certain expectation, right? So the, it's just they don't make these knives that with um they don't make these knives with a care so it's like uh i'm guessing they're getting paid 
per knife and they got to feed their family. So they're just uh, churning it out at massive speeds. And uh, I suspect the knife guy has a, a mistress. He had to feed his family and his mistress family because he rushed that job. And uh, not that was my second one. So I have my first one that I bought. And here it is. So this is one of the mixed wood ones. I think it's called Woodstock. A little bit larger. You got stainless steel, all the good stuff. And uh, so this one, as soon as I take it out of the pouch, I can smell it. It smells like wood shavings, kind of like when you sharpen a pencil. Uh, it doesn't look as bright as before. So the wood, it just feels like it's, um, it feels like it's unfinished. It feels like it's unfinished. And then it just took it, all the, you know, the dirt and everything and just seeped into the wood and then if i get closer you can kind of see a crack here in this particular wood and that it must be that wood because there's a, also a crack here so here you go um just uh well i should yeah i shouldn't slam it like that so here's a another thing about the lag laggy old knives is that you should close it very easily very gently because guess what you're gonna have um it's centered, but you can see like it's all crooked here. You can, um, they, uh, the blade will hit like the backstop or something like that. So you have to be more gentle with these knives because on this particular one, it's actually the blade tip that it's not going to show up, I know, but the blade tip is actually flattened out because the blade tip is hitting over here. So that is the contact point. And I think it varies probably from you know from knife to knife based on how they made it and that's um so this one was i think 190 ish or something like that so i guess your money is going into like maybe the materials more than anything but you can see it's quite dirty now um so you see why i went from here to here um i went for i thought this would be less uh less maintenance you know there's a horn handle and i understand like you have natural products are going to be some kind of like maybe irregularities so i'm not too mad about that but just the cut of the bl the blade stock like it's just so sloppy you know if i was working maybe i'll be the worst worker in these knife factories because i wouldn't let anything out but maybe i could work it inside a knife factory i just have to work for the right one and uh, i already showed this knife in another review and it's a roland lanier um why so serious knife and um this guy, actually recently, he's, he's a little bit crazy. I don't know what's going on with the drama, but just recently he's posting about, the, very transparent about his cost of the knives, how much it costs to dealers or restaurants, and his even his material costs. But what was interesting about that was that he actually posted the amount of knives that he's producing per day. And the amount of knives is 5.5, roughly 5.5 knives per day. So... This knife is gonna cost you mm, maybe around three fifty ish. I think I got this actually at a really good price. I think I got it at two eighty or somewhere around three hundred. If you can get around three hundred US for this, oh my god, it's so worth it. Let me just say it's so worth it. But even at three fifty, I'm telling you, it's worth it. This heirloom quality knife, and um, when you look at this knife, it's just like a spot on with the quality and the chamfer all the areas that need to be chamfered it's it's everything just no sharp point smooth uh there's you can see there's a um a detent ball ramp as well for the blade everything is well thought out to make a very smooth knife super even the finish is perfect so yeah just worth its money or it cannot be worth the money depending on how much you're willing to spend on a knife so my recommendation for French knives, let's see, you know, for the, for food use. Um, I know some people, some people might use this for gardening, but let's just say for food use, French knives. I, as from the beginning, I would say this and this, because it either can go this. You should get a number eight. This is number ten, um, and uh, you don't think about the the little fit and finish if it's all center. Who cares? Because it is what it is. And it met your expectation, and it does everything it's advertised to do. Then you have stuff like this Laguerre Onenbrock, and this is like um, I feel every time I have to fix the knife, and uh, I guess I don't have to. I can live with it, but it's like I can't help it. I have to. If I have the ability, I'm going to f 
fix whatever kind of cosmetic problems and it's just uh just come out the door like the whole backside was filled with all the you know the buffing compound that wax stuff the whole thing was filled up i had to scoop it out with a with a needle and toothpick and that kind of stuff is a carcinogen in the in the state of california <laughs> like everything else but <laughs> of course not in just california but yeah they don't even bother just cleaning out this one you know like you'll come out like uh completely clean not a trace of any kind of of the manufacturing process and also all 100 percent handmade so you have like uh, what is your time worth you know um sometimes i can think it's it's enjoyable or sometimes i feel it's annoying like i can go in front of the tv and like fix it but then other times i feel like i spent four hours you know filing off or doing to uh, to uh, something i would say 99 percent perfect i never try to get anything perfect and so i would not recommend getting these kind of knives at a certain price so in terms of price expectations if you're going to get these uh legiole knives i recommend that you get uh something around like one of the basic starting price one maybe around 50 to 70 dollars somewhere around there you get the starting price one and if that's has some kind of like cosmetic problems it doesn't matter right if it opens and feels like crusty it doesn't matter like because then it's a more of a working knife but when you're getting double that price or like or triple that price then it really makes you feel like it's not worth the money so this is my opinion because i know there's so many good knife um knife videos on this uh, brand and um it's just um they don't really talk about this kind of problem so i'm gonna probably link some of the, my favorite probably my favorite uh french knife reviewer and then and you know they're very romantic the pictures are very romantic but they, you don't talk about the flaws but maybe that's just me i'm i'm that kind of person so it's not for me but if you're like you don't care about this stuff you can go buy away but for uh if you're like me and a little bit picky or you want to get value for your money um then you then this review is for you because uh, i'm going to expose uh, the problems and so yeah even though this is a premium brand this uh it's a premium brand and you know they scoff at other you know trademark trademark authenticity and probably made in luthier and other place you know i actually i have um what did i have i think luthier um some other knife and also had problems i actually sent that back i sent it back because i had a problem so um I would say f the French knife world, they have some kind of fit and finish problems on some of them. Not every one of them. I think Philippe Georges. One of the other. There's there's French knife makers out there that are very good. And this is evident of it. Um, that they're very good and they have pride in their work and they're handmade. And uh, so let me just say, like, in terms of value, I like these two. And just if you're going to get this stick with their low cost materials and then you won't be disappointed because it really sucks when you buy knives and then you feel disappointed about it right so that's a review that's me talking about these brands and um so uh i will link up one of some other person you can subscribe if you want um i'm going to link up uh some i'm, I'm going to you know what? i'm going to try to keep doing that on my reviews i'm just going to throw my favorite like some of my one of my favorite right now is like metal effort i think youtubers so they have some favorite uh some they're not as popular now but uh there's some favorite youtube reviewers out there they're very good so um yeah thanks for watching and talk to you later